This is your mute and unmute. Yeah. You can rename it here. They need a name.
Would you want to? Shadow. Yeah, we should be ready. Can you guys hear us? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Bill looks frozen. The house looks frozen. Yeah. Can we get Bobby back? Bill looks frozen. Uh, okay, Bobby. Bobby, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Yep, I can hear you. No, can you hear us? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby, is that, that, oh, I thought you were in Florida on your horse farm there, sorry. California. Is that what? Born in the house and his, in the house board? Yeah, I'd like to call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. Today is Thursday, June 25th, 2020. Time is 6.32. Well, please rise and face to the east for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Would you call the roll, please? President Riley? Here. Vice President King? Here. Commissioner Carlson? Here. Commissioner Egan? Present. Commissioner Janner? Here. Commissioner McBroom? Here. Commissioner Todd? Okay, next item is matters from the public. Bridget, do we have anyone signed up to speak on the agenda items? We do not. Do we have any raised hands? No. No. Okay, the next item I have is, it's my pleasure to introduce a uh, brand new Park Chief of Police. Steve Schmidt. Steve Schindelbeck to present the David White Scholarship. Let's get on the screen. The Gail? Yeah. Okay. So, Gail, can you hear us? Yes, Caitlin, sorry, it's on my mom's computer. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Hey, Caitlin, can you hear us okay? Yes, perfect. All right. A little background here, the Monster David White Scholarship was established in 2006 by the local donor to encourage young people to pursue compassionate public service. The scholarship honors Officer White of the Naperville Park District Police, who, while on duty, helps save the life of a young person. The scholarship is open to applicants from the Naperville Park District Police, the City of Naperville Police, the City of Naperville Fire Department, the Police Explorers, and Fire Explorers. In past years, we have awarded the scholarship to applicants representing nearly all of these services. This scholarship is supported by private, don by private donors who have chosen to extend the scholarship beyond the initial 10-year pledge. Speaking on behalf of the Naperville Park District and all of the past scholarship recipients, we are grateful to the donors for their generosity and vision to support higher education and the families of our local first responders. I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the 2020 scholarship is Caitlin Schultz, daughter of Naperville firefighter and paramedic Carl Schultz. Caitlin has volunteered long term at several nonprofits, helping kids with disabilities, and also assisting with fundraisers. In her words, I learned so much from these kids. Life is so much more difficult for them. Seeing how I can support these kids makes all the difference in the world to me. With plans to attend Wabonsi Community College and then a four year university, Caitlin is preparing for a career in tourism and hotel management with a commitment to continue being active in public service. She ended her scholarship application essay with these words. I hope I will be a community leader and will not be afraid to put in work when it gets hard and not stop until something has changed for the better. Caitlin clearly models the attitude of service and concern for others that this award stands for. Caitlin, we are proud to award you the 2020 Officer White Scholarship and wish you the very best as you begin your first year in college this fall. At 
this time, we would also like to thank the members of the 2020 scholarship panel who spent time carefully reading and evaluating each application and essay according to the criteria established by the scholarship. The members of the panel included the following individuals. Bob Ross, Chief Human Resources Officer, Naperville Community Unit School District 203. Brad Wilson, Director of Recreation and Facilities, Naperville Park District. <clears throat> Kamala Martinez, President and CEO, Kids Manor. Marcy Schatz, Deputy City Manager, City of Naperville. Mike Riley, President, Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. Thank you again for your time and effort in evaluating all the applications that we received. Great job, everyone. Great job, Caitlin. Thank you so much. I'm deeply honored to receive this scholarship. It means a lot to me that you guys want to put uh, your time and effort into my future. Thank you so much again. I'm super, super excited to start my career in college. And thank you once again. Well, thank you. Thank you for the work you do for the community. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the monthly treasurer's report. Move to approve the May 20th, uh, 2020, or May 20, 2020 treasurer's report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Bridget, call the roll, please. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner Janner? Yes. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. President Riley? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Richard, would you read the items on the consent agenda, please? Item 5.1, approve the appointments of Vice President Mike King and Commissioner Josh McBroom to the Finance Committee, Vice President King to Interim Chair said Committee, 5.2, approve the appointments of Commissioners Rich Janner, Marie Todd, and Bobby Carlson to the Parks and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Janner to interim chair such said committee. 5.3, approve the appointments of Commissioner Bobby Carlson and Vice President Mike King to the Legislative Committee, Commissioner Carlson to interim chair said committee. 5.4, approve the appointment of Commissioner Rich Janner to the Parks Foundation. 5.5, approve the appointment of Commissioner Josh McBroom to the Riverwalk Commission. 5.6, approved June 11, 2020, regular meeting minutes. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? I think everyone's frozen right now. Can they hear us? Josh. Yes. Okay. I can hear okay. Would you call the roll, please? I, I need a, a, to accept. Oh, oh we so need to do. accept the consent agenda items. 5.1 through 5.6. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion on motion? Bridget, call the roll, please. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Commissioner Janner? Yes. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. President Riley? Yes. I need to make a motion for a short recess. Let's accept your consent. Right. Mike, we need a motion for the consent to approve. Yeah. Move to approve consent agenda items 5.1 through 5.6. Second. A motion and a second. Sir, this could be a voice vote or should we? Should everything be a roll call? Roll call. Okay. Could you take the roll, please? Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner Janner? Yes. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. President Riley? Yes. I'm going to take uh, just a, a brief a recess here while we and make sure that we get everybody unfrozen and Marie is on her way. So just take a minute here. I mean, if you 
Um, is it usually on the on this? Yeah, because I mean, if you look at us, you know, we're pretty clear. So there's thank you. Got your haircut again. Huh? King, Mr. King, you got your haircut again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was actually a haircut. This wasn't just a shower. This is actually true. <laughs> Can we get some Jeopardy music or something? Mr. King? You're in the big screen. Sing us a song. <laughs> no, one, no one wants to see or hear me sing or <laughs> even hum. I was asked to leave sixth grade core course. <laughs> I heard you sing at your outing last year. Oh, yeah. How wow. was that? Was, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We threw a 40 yard pass across that. Uh, that was we were all, I still got the arm. Allegedly. Back. Back in business. We're back. So we we'll move on to unfinished business. And 6.2. Mike, I can't, I can't, uh, re I can't pull it up. So, would you like me to read it? Mr. King, can you read it? Sure. Move to direct counsel to voluntary dismiss litigation against Joe, against Governor J. B. Pritzker. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Would you take the roll, please? Oh, oh, you gotta look at the screen, dude. I'm waving my hand. Commissioner Egan. Thank you. I'm going to channel a little bit of my, my inner Commissioner Heidi here. Uh, definition, common sense. Good sense and sound judgment in practical matters. Is it common sense that we could not share a golf cart between families? That we could not open the golf range? That it was impossible to keep six feet from the person next to you in clear open space? No, common sense did not exist in those decisions. Amazingly, common sense took a turn for the better when we filed our lawsuit instantaneously. Definition, courage. The ability to do something that frightens one. One might say common sense that we are not physicians. I agree. But the governor's experts changed their mind after we filed their lawsuit. And we certainly have access to experts at Edwards Hospital. We need to have the courage to allow people to make their own choice. We need to have the courage to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. We know that the virus does not live on services, yet playgrounds are closed. We know the rates of abuse and suicide are climbing. We have the opportunity to provide an outlet for those folks. I have shared previously that I'm in a high risk category. I have the choice to venture out into the scary world or cower in my home. We need to appeal the judge's ruling, get in front of three balanced judges, a vote, to, a vote yes to this agenda item puts the blood of the abused on your hands. I will be voting no to say all lives matter. Thank you. Any other comments? Would you yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, I, I believe when we started this discussion weeks ago, it was pretty ambiguous uh, on what what the right thing to do is and I don't think that's true anymore. I think uh, what we've seen, uh, judging from the Johns Hopkins um, COVID index map is opening up early, is going to uh, make this virus explode. And I know that that it may not, may not happen with uh, going on a playground, but you know, Governor Pritzker took a lot of heat for doing the wrong things and we have one of the best 
um, track records here so far as far as uh, how the state has handled this pandemic. So I think it it, it uh, makes sense. It behooves us to follow um, scientists and facts and not, you know, the desire to uh, get on a playground. Commissioner McBroom. Yeah, um, <clears throat> to Commissioner uh, Carlson, we can, um, I'll just respectfully disagree. I mean, it depends on what data you're reading and which scientists and which experts, but that's here nor there. I respect everyone's opinion. I don't, not a forum to debate those kind of things. My concern um, long term is that we've set a precedent that um, anytime we're scared of anything, um, we've completely abdicated our decision making power to one person in the state. And I think there's been a ton of cons inconsistencies there. And um, I've, like I've said in the past, I have a lot of respect for our staff. And there was a ton of common sense decisions that we could have made and can still make, but uh, we're still waiting to get direction from the state. And um, where does that end? So I will, I'll be voting against dismissal. Do you have any comments, Commissioner? Vice President King? Yeah, I just like to say that, you know, we, we've learned a lot through this process. We learned, you know, what, what we can do and what we can't do. We've never had a, I never, we never had a pandemic before, but we learned through this process um, from scientists, from, from just going through this, through, through life. I think at this point now, you know, we look to our legislators to work with the state because it does come down from the state down to us. So we work with it. We know what we know what we can do and what we can't do at this point. So we have to change some of these guidance and laws. So really, we have to work with our legislators and a group of bodies to make sure that we can do this and, and moving forward. If this ever happens again, hopefully it never will. Hopefully this was you know in a year we'll be we're done with this stuff. But we learned a lot. We learned how to kind of manage it, and we've done a great job so far. And I know we'll do a good job going forward. Commissioner Gear, Commissioner Tennant. Okay, uh, Bridget, take a roll, please. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Absolutely not. Commissioner Janner? No. Commissioner McBroom? No. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Riley? Yes. Okay, next item is uh, new business and discussion items. Start with uh, 7.1 capital projects. Yes, yeah, so it's discussed at the June 19th Parks and Rec Committee meeting uh, and for capital policy, we conduct a capital projects open house every year. Uh, the 2021 capital projects open house is slated for August 13th at RCC. Uh, the time is uh, planned for 5 to 6.30 p.m. And as we related to the committee last Friday, uh, for those who wanted to participate online, uh, after the meeting, we'll post all our project presentation boards so everyone can review them and provide comments just like we do in past years. And they would have about a week to two weeks to provide comments before we proceed with design. So we just want to provide an update as that relates to our policy. Uh, another item that relates to our policy is capital project tours. Uh, this is something we discussed earlier in the year, um, and then uh, we revisited last Friday at the Parks and Rec Committee uh, to talk about conducting tours of capital projects, and we, we discussed the big three projects at Wolf's Crossing Community Park, uh, 95th Street Community Plaza, and Knock Park improvements, uh, as well as a couple park metal improvement sites. Um, as we relate at the uh, Parks and Rec Committee meeting and uh, presentation, that the thought is with Wolf's Crossing being really um, you know, a few months out, and that would be a good maybe uh, tour with the board, like maybe in September. Uh, 95th Street Community Plaza is uh, slated and, and on track to be ready as early as next week. So that's that's pretty much done. And so then we're left with not park improvements and a couple park metal projects, uh, which would be Stanford Meadows and Brighton Ridge Park. So the thought is uh, to conduct a tour with maybe the uh, the board and staff members who can drive our personal vehicles to. Uh, some of these sites, these three sites, uh, toward the end of July. And the Parks and Rec Committee uh, thought it was a reasonable idea, so I just want to bring this idea to the larger uh, group for consideration. And if we were to conduct a tour toward late July, uh, we're targeting the evenings of like uh, July 21st, 22nd, 27th, or 28th. So just um, presenting it for, for discussion with the board. Right. And, and the Parks and Rec Committee uh, was very supportive of the concept. Any questions, comments? 
concerns? Commissioner Egan? Is the 95th Street Library going to be, or library, the, the part next to the library there on 95th Street, is the splash pad going to be able to be used or does it require showers or have we decided chlorine doesn't kill the virus so we can't use it? So, so at this time, uh, next steps is the Illinois Department of Health staff. They're coming out to inspect it uh, next week and they're going to review it and then provide us with further uh, guidance on how to proceed based on what's available, the information that's available at that time. So we're stuck in bureaucracy. Well, essentially, yeah, once we get their feedback, if they say and we can open, we'll proceed. If they say it has to be closed, uh, the splash pad is fenced in, so we would lock it off until we receive the proper notice. So what do you, what, you know, your guess, or I don't know, maybe it's Dirk's guess here. Um, since we can't go and play in our playgrounds, the fact that we're going to be able to open up 95th Street at all, let alone Wolf's Crossing? Sure. Well, the, uh, we're waiting to get the guidance. The executive order that prohibits the closest playgrounds is about to run out, so a new one's coming. There's indication in the DCO guidance that playgrounds are going to, outdoor playgrounds are going to open, and uh, his executive order that closed them expires tomorrow. So right now we are prepared, especially for camps, to use the playgrounds at all of these facilities. Uh, so I get the CDC guidance. And then um, if something else comes out in the executive order, we'll see. We've seen communications allegedly from the governor's office saying outdoor is okay. Uh, DCO guidance says indoor playgrounds are closed, which obviously implies outdoor ones are open. Um, while we haven't got the final paperwork from the governor, we're proceeding as if our playgrounds are open tomorrow. So if he puts out an executive order that keeps them closed, we're ballooning the levy over taxing the people and can't give them the services that they provided. Is that I think we didn't appeal. Thank you. Was, that, was there a question there? No, it was a finding of fact based on statements. I disagree. It's a statement of fact. But Commissioner McPherson. Uh, just to follow up on the playground. So if, if the guidance comes out tomorrow and says playgrounds are not um, not allowed, I mean, is that something we're going to enforce? We're in the same position we've always been about the enforcement. We. I remind people about what the executive orders call for. But the executive orders are um, to be self-policed, and that's what they say. And no, we're not issuing tickets. So park police aren't going to go out on any calls then? Well, not for people being on a playground. Oh, no, that's not true. We, we may show up if we are, we are dispatched to that call, but we will simply say, the, the, you know, the, the guy and make them aware of the guidelines and leave. We're not taking any enforcement. Okay, thank you. And then I have one more item. Yeah. List after project. So uh, this is for license assignment and consent agreement. This is for a property located at 1419 Deepway Court, Naperville. Uh, this was uh, actually a, an existing encroachment license approved by the park board. Um, but it's to be reassigned to a new owner because the home is changing hands between ownership. And so part of that process, we've been working with Dirk, and we just want to let you know that this license assignment and consent agreement will be presented to you. Uh, this home backs up to Bailey Hobson Woods Park, and the encroachment, as uh, you may recall from an uh, earlier conversation around this topic and this license assignment, has to do with the patio, masonry walls, and, and columns that just uh, encroach on the edges of Bailey Hobson so just essentially housekeeping lets you know that the property is changing. Actually, it's not going to come back before you. Just a more informative thing. It's working exactly as we wanted it to when we agreed to it in the first place. So we agreed that we would do the assignment upon noticing the kind of thing that the executive director can sign. So take care of that. Okay. Good. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner's Park Playground Renovation Grant. Yes. So this topic was also discussed at the June 19th Parks and Rec Committee meeting. Uh, this grant was uh, in collaboration with one of our staff members, uh, Sue Omitson, a local realtor, uh, applied for just to see uh, if we could get a grant of $12,000, uh, which we learned a few weeks ago um, that she actually received this local realtor uh, $15,070 for elements of playground project, including park bench, picnic table, game table, uh, holiday garden, and a few other items. 
Uh, so as related at the Parks and Rec Committee, this would be for Commissioner's Park Playground renovation. This project will probably be implemented in 2021. Uh, but we have the ability to um, enter into this grant agreement and proceed with acquiring these elements of picnic tables, park benches, bike racks, game tables, and a few um, uh, play equipment items uh, to cover that amount. And if we were to acquire that, we would get reimbursement from the grant this year. And then we can proceed with implementation of this renovation of Commissioner's Park in 2021. So, as I mentioned, we discussed this at the Parks and Rec Committee meeting last Friday, but we wanted to bring it to the large report for consideration to see if there was a consensus to proceed with this plan at this time. Okay, any, uh, any comments? It certainly seems like it makes good sense to go ahead with mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, any Commissioner Cubs ever on Nope. Okay. You have your consensus. Thank you. Next item is Fisher's Park parking lot project request. That's a little tough. Um, the, uh, oh, this was the, the young man who asked for a turn installation. Uh, oh. And that was the question as to whether or not the board wanted to come to the installation at commissioners. Uh, and so, to remind everybody, he wants to paint the names of uh, certain people in each of the stalls of commissioners. Using a permanent paint, I would certainly not recommend it be permanent. One of the things I want to alert you to, just in the analysis, is this is public forum analysis under the First Amendment. Uh, the parking lot is not traditionally a part of the public forum; it's intended for its purpose, which is to come and go. If you decide to allow this, however uh, meritorious it may be, you then I have opened it up to be a a, a forum where anyone can post similarly. So in a week or so, a uh, month or so, people can come and put exactly the opposite sorts of names uh, and, and can be back and forth. And you have no ability to control or deny that because you've created this as a public forum. So just to be aware that if you do that there, um, certainly that parking lot then is open for other sorts of art installations. And um, we'd, we're, we'll try, we'll, we would come up with an agreement, do whatever if the form was inclined to do it, and we'll try and limit it only to that parking lot. But I just want to make sure that you understood the consequences of the bringing to this uh, in a permanent sense of painting the parking lot. Commissioner Regan? Uh, my understanding is they wanted to use chalk. I wouldn't be in favor of any permanent marking other than the striping for. Uh, parking. Uh, people have enough trouble parking with the lines that are there. Um, with that said, I'm I'm okay uh, with chalk and setting a limit to how long it can be there and sending out the crews to, to spray it off in a week or 10 days or whatever uh, my esteemed colleagues here think is appropriate, but um, it, it, I, I'm okay with it in, in that sense. We actually have the ability to no. The question was, do we have the ability to put limits on it? Yes, we can. We can put some uh, framework around it that it's conditioned on um, these kinds of things that are not be permanent for those kinds of issues. Yeah, I'm actually sure. not. I would uh, remind the petitioner if he wants to seek a permit with a group to uh, do some type like of demonstration on the parks, like some of the others that we've approved, but. I would be opposed to any sort of artwork in the uh, in the parking lot, either in shop or otherwise. Commissioner Carlson, Vice President King, Commissioner McGrew. Rich, can you? Um, I didn't hear what you said. I apologize, Mike. I had said that uh, I would be supportive if the if the petitioner would want to take out a permit to. Uh, do some type of a demonstration or a protest or rally like we've allowed in, in other parks. Uh, we've got great precedent for that and, and we've always said that the parks and public spaces are, are uh, you could take out a permit for, for free speech and that type of thing. However, uh, I would be opposed to establishing the precedent for artwork uh, of any sort. Uh, again, regardless of the merit, we don't want to debate the merit of it, but uh, within any of our parking lots, including the, the Commissioner's Park parking lot. So I would be opposed. Mr. Zaking, did you have? 
we can't we can't hear you. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to hear what Rich was saying. Sorry, I apologize. Anyone else? Yeah, um, I I agree with um, Rich and 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 something that we want to start, especially um, to start making our parking lots public forum. Um, I think that could be a um, dangerous person that for us to suspect. Well, since this was uh, specific to uh, with its paint chart, whatever the substance is, to put our uh, commissioner's parking lot, let's go through and get a, get a consensus from the commissioners as to whether they support uh, allowing the commissioner's parking lot to be painted uh, for some period of time to be determined, painted or chalk used to uh, for, for art for this work. So Bill, I'll start with you. Would you be in favor of that? You said it was chalk, right? Not permanent. Right. No. Yeah, I'm I mean, in favor of that. Who did specify? Okay. Commissioner Carlson? Uh, if it's temporary, that's fine, just not permanent. Okay. Vice President King? The same, as long as it's temporary and a chalk, then it's, it's fine. I would agree. Commissioner McBroom? Same here. Temporary, fine, permanent, no. Commissioner Gator? I would be opposed by the Jersey Army. The majority seems to feel that it's acceptable. So, if it's not permanent, so we'll, it's we'll, not permanent. we'll bring back a formal agreement. And then we would actually vote on that. Yes. Just a point of clarification the permit required for someone on my side to get the seizure can sign up some of the time. Is the formal permit required for, or do we just say, hey, you know, uh, if you want to use sidewalk chunk out there, we're not going to, we're not going to. Cite you or anything along those lines. We have to issue a formal permit and establish the price on your site. You know, as long as you're only using chalk, go for it and just email the petitioner back and say, <clears throat> you know, go well issue a formal permit or do you think we need to issue a formal permit and establish the precedent in the way that Commissioner Todd and I were opposed to? The, uh, the sidewalk, so the question about sidewalk chalk, sidewalks are well written by right. uh, I mean, I was referring to sidewalk chalk as the actual yeah, instrument. Not I know, chalk. but when you see that on the sidewalk, it's a well recognized traditional public forum. The parking lot isn't. And so I think that you need to make a finding that you are going to open it up in a unique way because uh, allowing anybody to do anything on the parking lot other than park a car or use it for access, pedestrian access, is something different. The, this person wants to be able to not get honked at when they're putting in the art installation. They would need a permit for that, yes. Sure. So someone could essentially come along and decide that they want to put their art installation in one of our parks or is it only commissioner's park? But well, we're going to try and limit it to just commissioner's park. And there's no guarantee that somebody in a counter demonstration doesn't come and wash it away. Right. So we're going to make that clear to the, to the people who want to do this. We have to approve it. But if we had an activity going on in that park and people need to park there, well, that's part of the problem. Approving it allows them to take control of the space for a certain amount of space. The fall sports coming. I mean, yeah, how many so times can you reapply for a permit? So if he says, okay, you're going to get it for 10 days, it rains, I want another one for 10 days. I mean, how long does this go? Well, if you set the precedent that the parking lot's available for an art installation, people can come and apply. That's going to be a problem. So, and, and avoid and avoid like parking getting in the way of like parking because they have oh no no thanks. They take up parking spots where we're going to be taking. We don't know how many spots he wants. Those spots are then they're going to have to be blocked off somehow. Yeah, I'm against it. Yeah. No way. Nobody, nobody <laughs> said anything about blocking off parking spots. <laughs> Commissioner, I'm against it too. Right? That's parking's a premium. There's no way that we're going to give up parking spots. No, parking is a huge no, issue. Nobody's, yeah. You can park over it. The guy's point was he wanted you to drive up and see the people's names and have a reference. I'm not in favor of blocking off parking spots. We're going to an extreme to achieve somebody's agenda. Let the free speech happen. People get to park there. That's different. So, what about the time frame when they're actually when they're actually chalking this? I mean, if they spend a day or two out there doing this or ten days, 
how if they take over the parking lot, where are the patrons going to park that would normally park there during that artwork creation? Let them let them do it between 0500 and 0700, or you know 1600 hours or, or 1800 hours, and you know whatever when it's it's lower volume. Um, have them block off a spot at a time. I'm I'm not interested in in giving up more freedoms for our con our constituents because people can't park. People can park. They have to start at one end or the other. I've driven by commissioners many times, and there's been plenty of park open parking spots. They need to be strategic in how they approach it. You, you know, it, 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 I'm sorry, it didn't occur to me at first, but I, I would I would not support um, there being any parking inconvenience. So, I mean, if the question was, hey, you know, can they put some chalk that's not permanent? Yeah, but I. Yeah, I, I assume there would be a time period where there would be uh, blocked out parking. I, I don't, I don't think that's a good precedent. Um, so, well, then if this if this involves uh, keeping up parking spots, let's go through and take a consensus again. And what we're asking is, if, it's, if we're going to have to give up parking spots for this installation, would you be in favor? Let's start with you, Commissioner Regan. No, that's moronic like not being able to ride in the golf cart with my wife. Commissioner Carlson. Uh, no. Vice President King. No. Commissioner McBroom. No. Commissioner Jim. No. I move no as well. All right, so we'll, we'll talk to the, uh, the, the person who came forward and see if we can find an alternative to where they no. use it. The traditional sense that right that rich channel and stuff. Hold on, time out. I'm still in favor of allowing him to chalk a spot. I'm not in favor of blocking a spot. I don't know how that came into the conversation. His request did not require or ask for parking spots to be blocked. Well, we can confirm that with him, but obviously, when you're doing 600 parking spots. That's 600 times when people aren't going to be able to park while he's installing it, and he had a team. We don't have some of the details. I can ask him about those, but there's certainly some installation time, and he referred to it in a more semi-permanent way in his, in his correspondence. So, um, I, I don't know, Council. I'm not an expert. Maybe you are. How long does it take to write a name with chalk in a stall? I, okay, but I don't think that was his intent. I don't think he was just going to write a name with chalk. He, was, he talked about painting. Uh, in a way that was going to be uniform using 600 spaces. Well, I'll, I'll work with him and get a clarification on what his, his issue is about using it, but again, any time spent doing the parking lot opens them up for that, for that time to install it, whatever the time is, for the 600. I'll clarify with him what his details were and I'll report back to you. And we'll look for alternatives that he can use the park in a traditional way. He could erect 600 poster boards of the name, so the size equal to a parking lot for, for some time. We, we can figure that out. But use of the parking lot comes with a different question. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, our next scheduled meeting is a regular meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners, July 9th, 2020, 7 p.m. at the Fort Hill Activity Center. Uh, we had no executive session this evening. So the next item is adjourned. Move to adjourn the June, the June 25th, 2020 regular meeting. Second. A motion and second. This can't be a voice vote. It can't. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.